In this video, I'm going to help you set up a timer system, and it's going to come in three parts. The first part is we're going to set up the timer so that it increases once a second. Second part is we're going to show that timer on the screen. And the third part is we're going to watch that timer. And when it reaches a certain level, we're going to reset the level. Or when it reaches a certain number of seconds, we're going to reset the level to create a sense of urgency. OK. Well, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up this um, variable. So I'm going to look at my object player because it's going to be there for the whole time. And when that is created, I'm going to set a variable. Now, you'll notice I've already got a variable there for player speed. You can ignore that if that's not something you're doing. But I'm actually going to set up a global variable, which has global dot in front of it. And it's going to be called time in level. And at the moment, it's going to be zero. So that's setting it up. OK, fantastic. Well, when it starts, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set uh, an alarm. So an alarm is very much like an alarm clock. And 30 frames is half a second, so 60 frames in a second. So after a second, alarm zero is going to go off. OK, well, what we're going to do is over here have an event that will only go off when alarm zero goes off. So when alarm zero goes off, we want it to count a second. So we're going to get this thing called global. There it is. Uh, global dot uh, there. And we're going to increase it by one. So basically, every time the alarm goes off, whatever it was, it's going to be relative to it. So it's one, then it's two, then it's three. And then, of course, we need to set the timer again. Otherwise, this will only happen once. And you'll remember that the timer needs to go for 60 frames because that's a second. So I'm just going to check that I haven't broken anything here. Uh, I don't think I have. Yeah, my game works fine. So that time is running, but you can't see it. So let's have a look at it, shall we? Well, what I'm going to do is I've got this object here called Object Projector. Now, you might or might not have seen this before, but I'm going to put this in the room. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to put that Object Projector in the room. It doesn't really matter where it is because we're not going to be able to see it. But let's make the changes to our object projector to get it to do its job. So what it's going to do is we're going to use this thing called the draw event. And this will actually, when the draw event's running, that object will be invisible. We won't be able to see it. And so we are going to set up some text on the screen. So there we go. Draw value. Yep, that's it. And so what we're going to put is a caption, which is going to say SEC for seconds. I'm going to get it to use the value of that global dot time in level. And I'm actually just going to put it in the top corner there. So I'm just going to put it 15 pixels from um, the left and 15 pixels from the top. So it'll be just in the corner. And that should update all the time. So let's see if that works. So we run the game. There it is. So you can see up in the top corner, it is in fact counting the seconds. Now. If I wanted that to look a bit nicer, OK, let's see if we've got any fonts that we can use. Here we've got one called Game Start. I'm just going to have a quick look at this. This is American Typewriter. It's 52. That's probably a bit large for me. I think I might make it 36. So 36. There we go. That'll do me. Game Start. I think I might actually call that um, font underscore timer, just so that I know what I'm using that for. OK, so back in my object projector. You'll notice that I'm writing that. I'm going to go over here and search for font. There it is. And I'm going to set my font as that thing called font timer. All right, let's have a go and see what that looks like. There we go. So I'm counting the seconds up in the corner of the screen. And as you can see, it's going up once a second. Well, now we've done two parts of this. And you could have it counting down too if you wanted so that it was more obvious to the user that they're running out of time. But let's assume that we're going to count up for this, and you can work it out if you want to do something different. So back here in the player, we're going to get it to check 60 times a second on the step. So a step runs once a frame. And we're going to check, and we're going to see if something is true. So I'm typing if. Right. Well, if the variable, well, we know that it's called uh, global dot there. If it is greater than 10, then we're going to have something happen. And what we're going to have happen is we're going to restart the room. 
So you'll notice that I'm dropping it next to it, and it's got that little line down there. For some reason, my interface is really small at the moment. It shouldn't really matter to you. But so if it gets greater than 10, and it'll check this 60 times a second, then it will restart the room. OK, well, let's have a look and see if it works. OK, so here we are, and we're moving around. And let's say we're trying to get to something in a hurry without wasting too much time. And we get there. And in now it resets, and you'll see that I'm back at zero seconds. And every time it tries to count up from 11, it'll trip off that conditional. So there you go. I'm trying to get there in time, and I failed because I'm back at the start. So there you go. That's how you can implement a timer system. Of course, you can make all your own changes to it. But those three basics are there. We set up a timer. We display it. Probably we display it. You could have a timer that they couldn't see. And then you have a consequence for when that timer reaches a certain level.